Hello, today I'm going to show you how I built a gravity fed salt water mixing station to be able to do easy automatic daily water changes on my reef tank. So when I redid my basement, one thing that I wanted to do was build this uh, gravity fed water changing station. Uh, so this is uh, the laundry room and uh, excuse the mess, <laughs> it's still kind of a work in progress. Uh, the water that supplies uh, uh, my uh, washer and dryer, the pipe is here and I actually teed off of it here using these T connectors and now this is feeding my RODI system. So it's right here. And the plan is to have this tank here, which is my original uh, RO, uh, RODI reservoir. It has a nice float valve here. So that way I could always keep my RODI system on and have it fill up to this level. And back in the old days, I would then, if I wanted to make salt water, I would uh, put a pump in and transfer it to this, uh, uh, another 45 gallon brute and then once the water is in I would mix it now the system did work uh, you know I, I used to uh, <laughs> I used to move the water using this uh, very tiny maxi jet pump so it, it took a while uh, and really the main thing here is that it was a bit of space having these two uh, uh, 45 gallon um, uh, breed side by side. So I wanted to uh, maximize our much, as much vertical space as possible. So I built this uh, stand uh, from two by fours. This thing is heavy as hell. I essentially framed it like a wall would where you have uh, <laughs> uh, studs and uh, what are these called? The, the top plate and a bottom plate and same design here. And in the back, essentially it, it it's, it, identical except I did a cross brace here. Uh, I, I did several designs and uh, uh, I put it up uh, to some of my uh, engineering colleagues and they said, okay, so <laughs> you have to have diagonal, uh, diagonal bracing somewhere. So I did this uh, diagonal bracing. Uh, you know, this is not, <laughs> this is not a carpentry channel. Uh, so I'm, I'm not gonna show you how I cut and build this, but I do have the plans available. Uh, so if, if you wanna, if you wanna, rebuild this design uh, do let me know i will happily share my designs i build uh, a little bit of extra room here so that way i have a uh, place to uh, uh to uh, uh add in salt and uh the most important thing is uh here is this little bit i have a gate valve and water i have to drill i'll show you this in a little bit i have to drill a hole in the bottom here that will accommodate uh, my uh, uh, this little thing here so this little thing this uh, three quarters inch piping is going to be drilled it's going to be sitting somewhere on the bottom here and then the idea here is that this will be lifted back on top and whenever i need to uh, get salt water i can open this valve water will rush from this container which would be on top we'll see this after it's built through the pipes into here and now all I have to do is just add my salt. So let's go upstairs, I'll get my power tools and I'll show you how I'll drill this brute for a three quarter inch uniseal. So I used a one and a quarter inch hole saw to cut a, a circle in my uh, brute and that will accommodate my uh, three quarter inch uniseal. Uh, every uniseal has a specific hole size so if you're gonna do this, uh, do check the recommended uh, uh, hole saw that you need uh, for your inner seal and then you essentially push the fitting right in and then after you do that uh, you actually get your PVC pipe and th there is no trick to this other than just like a little bit of force uh, you just kind of force it in I had trouble doing that with one hand while I'm filming so I had to put the camera aside a little bit uh, I wouldn't actually recommend putting any lubrication it's meant to be friction friction fit so uh, you just want to you know wiggle it side to side until it kind of pushes in and then once it's in it's a little bit easy to kind of uh, wiggle in and out to adjust the, uh, the length of pipe sticking out and the angle of the elbow that you have there uh, overall this process of uh, drilling the tank for the uniseal took probably about uh, 15 minutes so here's the finished installation i'm just waiting for uh, the 
cement to join the PVC uh, joints together to dry before filling it up with water. But uh, yeah, here is the top brute that's a uh, brute that's going to be filled with RODI. Here is my uh, union seal. Then we have three quarter inch elbow, three quarter inch into uh, I guess uh, male threads that goes into the female part of the union here. Then we have our ball, uh, our gate, yeah, ball valve actually, not a gate valve. Then we have another union with the uh, uh, male threaded PVC, uh, three quarter inch elbow, three quarter inch elbow, and then we have the pipe that will extend here. And another thing that I need to do is uh, I need to build another kind of support because I don't want like the weight of the plumbing to be loaded on the, on the joint here. So uh, I'm gonna build uh, kind of a cradle. Uh, by the way, this cradle here, I actually built it out of, uh, I printed it with 3D. So I uh, designed it uh, so that way it's just a little bit larger than uh, uh, two by four lumber, right? So two by four lumber is actually uh, three and a half, about three and a half and an inch and a half. It's not really two by four. Uh, so I built this little block that just perfectly kind of cradles uh, this uh, three quarter inch uh, uh, ball valve. Uh, so that way the weight is being uh, supported by the wood and it's actually, it's not loaded up on the joints here. So I plan to do something similar. I just got to take out some measurements and, uh, and uh, kind of uh, uh, do, another, uh, do another 3D print here. Uh, all right, so uh, let me wait for the glue to dry a little bit and then we'll fill this up with water. Uh, we'll <laughs> keep an eye on this uh, union seal. Hopefully it uh, stays. So, you know, the, the only thing that's kind of keeping the seal is the friction. Uh, as you saw, uh, the hole here is just like a little bit smaller than the uh, three quarter inch PVC. So when you jam it in there, uh, the pressure from the PVC kind of pushes the rubber seal and, and seals against the, the container. So in theory, that's how it works. We'll, <laughs> we'll test that theory. Uh, one good thing that I did when, uh, when I was uh, uh, designing, I mean, I didn't design everything in, uh, in the basement, but I did want to get uh, vinyl flooring because it's uh, pretty much waterproof. Uh, so uh, it will take some spills. Here's my cat saying hi. Hey, Stella. Do you like what daddy built? <laughs> In my mind, I'm like, no, F you. <laughs> anyway, my cat has a salty time. Okay, guys, it's uh, 24 hours later. I've uh, given the cement, the PVC cement, some chance to uh, cure. And so far, so good. I'm getting no leaking here. You could hear the water kind of trickling into this reservoir. So let's go up. See, it's full. The pipe is there. No leaking. If you guys are not familiar with how I uh, set up uh, my uh, systems, I have a here a Tanzi and got the float valve here. So this will stop the water once this container drains. And uh, these are uh, these conduits that I've built to kind of run the wires. So my tank currently is upstairs above this uh, room, a little bit off to the side, my Red Series for 250. And uh, when I was uh, redesigning the basement, I built these conduits and I ran some wires. Uh, so here I have this bundle. I got uh, my uh, RDI, I got electricity from the Tanzi. If you guys uh, don't already know, you could extend the Tanzi uh, you know, it, it comes with like wires that you install uh, upstairs in, into uh, something that looks like this. So essentially you could extend the wiring. All you need is like a, a quick connect electrical clip here, uh, as well as this is a stereo speaker wire. So uh, I'm able to essentially run a long lead from the power of the Tanzi Osmolator downstairs and connect it to the pump here. Obviously I, I, this is, you know, I'm still kind of fiddling around, so I haven't made the final corrections, but if eventually, uh, you know, you could make a solid connection uh, without these quick connectors and use uh, electrical tape, 
but I like the quick connect uh, feature, but I still want to wrap some electrical tape and really make this more solid. But uh, yeah, here and uh, what's coming down from here is the uh, RODI tubing. Uh, and then I have two lines here for my dose, as well as the, the aqua bus for my dose. So the plan is to uh, resume doing my uh, automatic water changes with my DOS system. I built a little, uh, I did a little video of that. I'll leave a link for that below. Uh, but yeah, so effectively everything is kind of plugged. I'm gonna test the bottom here. Uh, let me just show you again. So here's the Tansy. Here is the new pipe I installed. Here's the float valve that will shut up my RODI system once this uh, 45, 44 gallon boot is almost done. And on the bottom here, there is absolutely no leak from uh, the Uniseal. There is no leaking from any of the fittings here and uh, no leaking from the Union. So, so far so good. So now I'm gonna give this a run um, and uh, see whether, you know, by opening this, in theory, I should be able to fill uh, my uh, reservoir here by creating a gravity siphon. So, uh, <laughs> Let me, I think I need, maybe I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask one of uh, my kids to help shoot this uh, because I, I think it's a two, <laughs> it's a two person job. I don't think I'll be able to open the valve and, and shoot at the same time. So let, let, let me enlist the help of uh, some volunteers and I'll get back to you. So now I'm going to give this a try. So let's see, I go like this and, then, and there we go, the water from the RODI system is flowing down the hill and filling up my container here. And a little bit of splashing. So maybe that's something that I could work on, see if I could divert the stream a little bit more. But uh, the floor of the spinal, not a big deal right now. Uh, but in, in the principle kind of works. Let me see how responsible it is. I could maybe slow down so that I could potentially actually kind of yeah modulate the volume here to prevent uh to prevent a lot of uh, uh splashback but yeah full throttle off wow i like it no more waiting for uh no more waiting for my uh tiny little <laughs> maxi jet pump to move uh gallons of water in like five, 10 minutes and then forget, forget that I left it on and then flood the basement. All right, let's, let's try it one more time. Oh, this is fun. Uh, this is gonna make water things so much easier. Okay, ladies and gents, here's the completed project. I have my RODI reservoir here, 44 gallons. This is hooked up to the RODI system behind here. It's always on. There's a float valve connecting uh, the inlet here. So it's always gonna be full. And this pumps water to the tank upstairs with a Tanzi osmolator through that conduit, the top conduit here. Then whenever I need to make salt water, I open up this tap. Obviously I need to remove the lid, fill the bottom reservoir with fresh water add my salt there is a pump here and a timer that will help me kind of mix the salt and uh, circulate things within here and then i have my dose system doing automatic water changes so every day this pump turns on takes water from the upstairs tank actually this water turns on takes water from the upstairs tank through here and takes it out and discharges it in the back here we have a drain i could always take like you know if i want to collect uh, dirty salt water let's say for my qt i could always uh, uh you know use that and then this pump turns on and takes about one uh sorry two liters from the freshly mixed salt water and pumps it up to the tank upstairs uh, so, you know, every, everything is uh, working really well. This is now like day four, day five, no leaking. So I'm really happy with this. The plumbing looks solid. I just need to kind of build a little cradle here and build a proper shelf for the dose here. And I'm good to go. A couple of things that I forgot to discuss here is, is just safety. So obviously uh, there's two, two elements that you need to think about here. One is 
this is full of water i i forgot the weight of like uh, 444 gallons of water is it's about 400 pounds so you do want to make sure that the structure is kind of solid again i built this probably like way overkill but i, I just wanted to make it make it sure that it's absolutely uh you know sturdy uh, one tip that i got when designing this is is you want the structure to support the weight and you want the screws to support the structure. You don't want the screws to support the weight. So for example, one easy way I could have built this is uh, you know, make these uh, 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 boards a little bit thinner by you know, two and a half inch here, two and a half inch there, and essentially screw them in from the side. If I had done that, then all the weight would be loaded on the screws. So uh, the, the tip that I got is to build a structure that will support the weight, distribute the weight of the wood. And the screws are there to kind of keep the wood together and not necessarily to support the weight of the 400 pounds. So that's one tip. The other tip is uh, when you have a, uh, an object that's got a high center of mass like this, you want it, you, the concern is tipping over. And obviously, if, if you're if you're living in a place where you get earthquakes regularly, uh, you know it, you don't want like any kind of back and forth motion to potentially tip this over and, and uh, have uh, a lot of water on the ground. Let me put it on white. Yeah, there, that's better. So what I did here, you, you didn't see it, but when I was uh, building the basement, I have uh, a wooden stud here and a wooden stud there. And eventually once I'm happy with the arrangement and how all the wires are running, I'm gonna essentially run a strap around and that keeps this from tipping over. So uh, very important, you don't wanna have a whole container fall, you know, worst case scenario, if <laughs> it falls on somebody and it really hurts them, uh, God forbid, hopefully none of that ever happens. Uh, Another situation would be if it falls and it just kind of floods your basement, that will just kind of uh, create a lot of headache. So uh, do have a plan for how you're going to secure this vertically because you don't want to leave it unsecured. Again, if there's any kind of back and forth movement, this could potentially tip over. Uh, the other element of safety that I want you to think about is gravity siphons, right? So <laughs> uh, if you're if you're gonna like me you want to have essentially this is going to be your ato reservoir and you're just pumping water into the tank you got to think of where where the tank is relative to this right is it above this container or below the container so my tank right now is upstairs so as the pump runs water through this line the pumps upstairs but as soon as the pump stops gravity will naturally take the water down and back in the container. So I, I don't have to worry about a gravity siphon. Now, if my tank was, let's say on this floor, <laughs> well, maybe I'm foreshadowing what's, what's gonna happen. <laughs> but if I have a tank here and this, uh, uh, the water is going up, across and down, as soon as the pump stops, well, the pressure, the, uh, I forgot whether it's the actual pressure. There, there's a scientific explanation for a gravity siphon. Uh, I believe it is, it is the pressure in the hose will lead water to drain from this downhill and that will lead to a gravity siphon. So essentially if, if I, if I just ran this wire and have my tank over here and as soon as the ATO goes on, then I, the line fills with water and when it stops, there's still pressure on uh, on an actual line and that will allow water to essentially continue draining out of here until an equilibrium is reached. So that equilibrium will probably happen after I flood my uh, sump and, and dump so much fresh water into my tank. So you wanna be careful of that. Now there are solutions to prevent the gravity siphon and and uh, uh, when, when, uh, when <laughs> if and when I need to uh, have a tank down here, uh, I'm, I have a clever system that will prevent this ever, uh, this from occurring. Well, thanks for uh, watching this long video. Hopefully this uh, build was uh, interesting for you. I know I've been a little bit slow. Uh, uh, the basement reno has taken a lot of my time, but I got some uh, interesting content coming up. So uh, stay tuned and see you around.